So today's webinar is being presented by Dr. D.K. Lee from the University of Illinois. And it's part of our Innovations in Agriculture and Rural Development webinar series here at the Center. And the goal of this webinar series is to connect the innovative ideas and the work of land-grant university scientists in the North Central region with stakeholders and potential users of that research and technology in rural areas. So before I introduce our speaker, I wanted to point out several administrative items. And the first one is that DK will speak for about 20 or 25 minutes. As well, uh, I think it's a good idea to leave the question and answers to the end of DK's talk. If you have any questions for our speaker, I would encourage you to put your question directly into the chat box. And I'm going to moderate the Q&A session, so I will most certainly get to it. And finally, if you'd like to follow up with DK following the webinar, he's going to provide, provide his contact uh, details, and I'm sure he would be very pleased to, to hear from you. So we're really delighted to introduce and welcome Dr. D.K. Lee, who is an assistant professor of crop sciences at the University of Illinois. DK is a production agronomist with a broad research and educational background in crop production, soil science, and international agriculture. In his current research, his goal is to optimize agricultural systems for sustainable bioenergy feedstock production and soil and water conservation using native perennial grasses. And today, DK is going to talk about this very topic and, the, and in specifically the use of perennial grasses in sustainable production and agricultural systems. So with that, uh, I would like to hand it over to our speaker today, to DK. Uh, welcome. And thank you, Carolyn. Great. Okay, Thanks. Oh. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Carolyn. And thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank everybody for participating in this webinar. Uh, recently, we have been talking about sustainable agriculture a lot more than we used to. With the current trend in sustainable cropping system associated with the world food supply as well as bioenergy opportunity, Various cropping systems have been proposed to maximize farm income and minimize environmental impact. Among those many cropping systems, today I would like to talk about integration of perennial grass into our current cropping system to maximize farm profitability. I'll start with the importance and benefit of the grassland agriculture and multifunctional agriculture. I'll talk to some of the uh, limitation and difficulty of the perennial grass production. And I'll move on to my research related with the agronomy of perennial grass to help a better understanding of the perennial grass agriculture. At the end, I'll talk about real world example of the perennial grass farm and its economics. Our goal in agriculture is a permanency. We can think about this a permanent a permanency as a sustainability. As you, as you see, this is not a new thing. It has been emphasized from back in the beginning of our modern agriculture. In 1948, USDA published uh, the yearbook of, yearbook of Agriculture, Grass. The definition of the permanent agriculture by this book is not any different than currently we are using. The defini definition of the agriculture the agriculture is can satisfy indefinitely all our need of the food, fiber, and shelter in keeping with the living standard we set. Now we are adding one more product on them, which is bioenergy feedstock. Why this book was titled with grass and talking about permanent agriculture? I think there is the reason. As you know, our fertile soil on which we are farming now was developed by our tall grass prairie. Mr. Anderson, who was the 13th secretary of the USDA, said, grassland is a good way to farm and to live the best way I know, I know of to use and improve soil, the very thing on which our life and civilization can rest. 
we know grassland is very important and tall grass prairie was the foundation of our fertile soil and current productive farming system. Then what, then what is the problem? The problem is we are losing our grassland significantly right now. We understand the majority of grassland we are farming around right now is very important for using for the raw crop production. But some of the environmentally sensitive land, like a marginal land, could be maintained as a permanent, gra permanent grassland. As we lost grassland, we are losing many benefit from the grassland. We need to think about our future generation. We as a parent of the future generation need to care for the earth. We need to enrich our living environment with uh, clean and plentiful water, fertile, vibrant, and productive soil, abundant, abundance and diversity of the plant and animal, renewable energy, and sustainable food and produce. Our future management choices should promote this goal. Our <clears throat> We know our uh, hist historically managed our grassland agriculture can reduce and slow down climate change and desertification, soil erosion, flooding, and other yields. That is why we are talking about multifunctional agricultural system integrated with a ver various crop on different landscape. The future agricultural system could include include a perennial grass-based sustainable agriculture. Those systems would increase, increase soil organic matter and microbial life, decrease the use of fossil fuel and toxic chemical, and we can produce a sustainable bioenergy and more soil protected with the living cover. Greater diversity on plant and animal. And another most important thing for the farmer is uh, income. Maximize uh, land resource to uh, maximize the farm profitability. As you know, not all land are good for row crop production. Some soil and uh, some soils are not able to support annual row crop. Some are too dry and highly erodible or too wet. Some have a serious fertility issue or high soil salinity. Some some regions are too cold for the row crop production. Those are the land and soil we like to work with, work with the perennial crops. Since many perennial crop and perennial grass can handle better those situation. In the beginning, there was only land and prairie grass slowly came and built our fertile soil. And we support all the people from this land. We believe we should. I believe we should continue providing food from our land, while while we can conserve our land resource by planting uh, by planting perennial crop on highly uh, erodible land or too wet to produce any raw crop. We know the biodiversity on the landscape will promote productivity and sustain sustainability of our, our agriculture. Obviously, farming cannot be sustained just with environmental service. We also need to have income. There are several income streams uh, could, could be associated with the perennial grass. The first thing is the hay. And another great opportunity is seed production, especially with the native plant. Also, specialty meat is, a, is an option too. With a health diet and a concern about human health, grass-fed or organic, organic meat demand is getting much higher right now. And you also get, can get conservation payment as well. Even though we do not have yet carbon credit and bio, uh, cellulosic biofuel feedstock production will bring another big opportunity for the you know, perennial grass farm. Also, recreation could be a great opportunity for the some region. Sounds like a perennial grass farming is a good agriculture then why are we not too excited about? I think there are several hurdles to overcome to have a good perennial, uh, perennial grass farm. A typical problem are uh, associated with establishment and management practice and also market value and availability. 
However, this problem, uh, especially about establishment and management practice, has been significant, significantly improved since we start to work with the bioenergy crop. Lots, lots of bad reputation of the perennial grass associated with agronomy has been gone with the modern technology for the planting and with the control. Let's talk about some agronomy of the perennial grass. We can learn from many aspects of the perennial, perennial grass agronomy from our native grassland. As you see here, uh, every, spe every species has their preference of their he preference of habitat and environment. It provides an important insight when we select the plant on the landscape and different soil. The first step of adopting perennial grass, uh, the first step of adopting perennial grass is landscape designing with the different species. When we design cropping system, including perennial grass, we need to think about many different ways to improve ecological function and uh, production function and then cultural function. Ecological function could include the soil erosion, nutrient cycle, biodiversity, carbon sequestration, biological control of the past, water conservation. Food production, uh, the food, uh, production function could include food and feed and bioenergy feedstock and seed production. Cultural function could include, include uh, recreation and visual quality and education. Depending on the landscape, water, and soil situation, we need to uh, we need to consider integrating row crop and different perennial species. Not all land for the perennial crop as not all land for the row crop. There are many grass and four available from our prairie. As you see here, uh, the big blue stem, prairie cold grass, prairie grass and forb mixture, Indian grass, switch grass, some wetland species, and the cool season uh, grass mixture. We need to think about the best species fitted into you, uh, your environment and, and produce the best amount of your you know, product when you think about your having the grassland farming system on your uh, farm. Not all species perform equally under given environment, and it, it is necessary to select the best species. Uh, here, graph is showing some of uh, the performance of the native grass in central Illinois. Two cultivars of Indian grass and three cultivars of a big blue stem, switch grass, and some mixture of native grass, and also exotic species of miscanthus. As you see, there is a difference among species and mixture. Also, you notice some species respond more severely to the weather condition we had in through the 2000, through 2010 to 12. And 2010 was a very wet year, 2011 and 12 was a dry year. But some species not respond to those severe weather condition maintain uh, their performance very well. But uh, careful thing is that all this information I'm taking from Central Illinois and may not apply to your region. And then if you need the specific information for your region, please contact. I think a better idea to contact expert in your region or contact me. I may be able to help you find the uh, best people in your area. Again, this is from Central Illinois. I'm gonna talk about some cultivar selection. As you see a switchgrass example, there are a big difference in performance among cultivar. Uh, di uh, this difference associated with, associated with the origin of the cultivar and some level of genetic. And you see two, two uh, Alamocano cultivar from Southern, southern uh, area from Texas and Oklahoma, and some of Midwestern Great Plain uh, uh, cultivar, and also Northern cultivar too. Just like Alamo, one example I want to talk about the example of the Alamo, which is originated from Alamo, Southern Texas. It has Southern Texas. It has a high yield potential, but not well adapted to cold, adapted to cold and short growing season. During the last five years. Alamo was okay in Illinois and produced the greatest biomass in central Illinois. And 
I will, and but I, I I have not seen any winter kill, and but there's some level of winter kill always observed in during the last five year. But however, but it would be interesting to see the uh, any severe winter kill uh, be observed uh, after this winter cold winter in 2013 and 2014. And then, as you see, the depending on which cult where you go with, you can have a lot more biomass than some others. Once you have your selection, we need to put them into the ground. Uh, I know it is it is a, a picture showing the three different grass type. Mainly, you can find from our tall grass prairie, uh, switch grass, Indian grass, and big blue stem. I know it is it is not easy to work with a small and ploppy seed and not like a row crop. I'm sorry I'm getting trouble with my mouse control. But with the modern equipment and with the control, we can have a good establishment and often we get production during the establishment year. It is important to have a good seed and right equipment. Uh, this is a picture showing the, our uh, example of the perennial grass establishment done in, in, in central Illinois Champaign. Uh, even under the extreme drought condition, before planting or after planting in 2012, we have very successful establishment with rice seed selection and equipment and with good with control. And the picture was taken in September 17, same year of the planting. Some seed has a reputation of the slow germination. Uh, during the uh, last decade or so, bioenergy industry made a significant improvement on seed germination uh, and establishment, uh, establishment issue through breeding new cultivar with fast germination and new technology. As an example, uh, cold grass was one of the most difficult to establish, but we found simply planting of the, simply planting of the caryopsis like wheat, wheat seed, speed up germination much faster, and we have very successful establishment of, with this technology. I guess one of the biggest improvements we made from perennial grass establish, establishment is with the control. Now we have many more options for the herbicide, and with the control is much easier than used to. If you have a good with control, and during the establishment year, you will not have much issue after that time period. Once you have a solid stand, a good solid stand management is management is uh, pretty easy. Last thing to consider is harvest management and fertility management. Depending on your objective, biomass can be harvested in different time and during the season. For your forage production, you can harvest the biomass all in the summer, uh, late spring, and you can maximize biomass, biomass production and also maximize the feed, uh, uh, feed quality. For the biomass, bioenergy feed stock, you can harvest later in the season or following spring and maximize the feed stock quality. Depending on the timing, timing of the harvesting, nitrogen fertilization has to be adjusted for maximum biomass and stand the health as well as the economic benefit. Now I want to move on to real world grass farm. Uh, we'll talk about the Ecosun Prairie Farm currently operated in South Dakota. Ecosun Prairie Farm was started in 2008 by several faculty members in South, in South Dakota State University. The goal of the Ecosun Prairie Farm was to demonstrate economic by uh, variability, uh, economic viability of a commercial, a commercial grassland grown on cropland. One section, 600, portion of 640 acres of the cropland and former CLP land converted to native grassland and restored uh, wetland in to, uh, beginning from 2008. Currently, as of 2013, they have a 70 acre of the field under the seed production and 260 acres under the either hay production or pasture operation. Uh, 70 acre of the seed production include 60 acre of the switchgrass seed production and 10 acre of the prairie cold grass and wet grass and sedge. And 260 acre uh, hay and pasture ground has a warm season mixture or fall 
and one season cool season four but a legume mixture and still some of the land under still under crop production right now. Uh, Rosa, it looks like we've lost DK. Um, excuse us, um, audience members, while we get our presenter back. There he is. Okay. DK, are you there? Okay, can you hear Out me okay clear. now? Continue on. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm almost in panic situation all day, all this morning. I have lots of technical issues. I hope my presentation go okay, going okay. Okay, I'm going back. Uh, the picture is showing 640 acres, uh, acre of the Ecosun Prairie Farm uh, with some seedgrass seed, uh, seed production field highlighted with the blue line. And also, this farm has various different places. It has a water issue, seasonal wetland, and they have some uh, prairie cold grass and wet uh, wedge grass and sedge seed production going on right now. As you see, is many land, uh, many portion of the you know acres uh, is not able to support the row crop production. That's the one of the main reason this area was selected for the Ecosun uh, Prairie Farm uh, grass uh, grass. A and C the production. And end of the 2013, the renovation of the Ecosun farm has been completed with 400 acre of the grassland farm and getting stable, stable income through a variety of the product. How, however, there were some challenge until getting stable uh, production phase. Excuse me. Uh, especially during the establishment period. Many things are associated with the timing and economics, like uh, achieving planned uh, production and cost level and marketing to, obtain, uh, marketing to obtain the premium price and transitioning to, uh, to get through the establishment period, like a uh, uh, cost share source on seed and seedling cost, uh, maintaining income stream during the transition year and generating income as soon as possible uh, on uh, newly established grassland without harming the stand. Currently, Ecosun Farm is making income through products including uh, native grass hay, native uh, plant seed, custom grazing, and grass finished bed grass finished beef and in future possible income source could be cellulosic biofuel feedstock production and recreation. As of today, ecosystem services are not included in farm income. However, the value of the ecosystem service could make a grassland farm much more attractive. The the way that producer uh, producer might be paid for the ecos ecosystem service like uh, Conservation payment, environmental, environmental market like a carbon credit, uh, branding like a grass-fed beef, and marketing environmental amenity like uh, ecotourism and hunting. Uh, with that, Ecosun Priority Farm generated a gross income of over $130,000 in 2012 with a net income of $60,000 from 400 acres of the grassland. And, and I heard they uh, made over $230,000 in 2013 with the higher uh, grass seed production and more beef production. Overall, overall, that return was highest in grass seed production and lowest in the livestock operation with a high operation cost. And then that return of the hay production was intermediate. This Ecosun Priority Farm demonstrated the potential to increase farm, uh, farm profitability by integrating perennial grass as a part of the cropping system. Carolyn, can you hear me okay still? I can hear you loud and clear, DK. Okay. All is good. Okay. okay. I'm just, I just want to make sure my microphone seems like getting lower in the battery. Actually, okay. you're you're very silent right now. Just speak up and speak directly into the microphone. Thank you. Okay. Can you hear me okay now? Oh, I can hear you, but it's it's quite faint. But we can still hear you. 
Okay. Now. Oh. Okay, the map is developed by the USDA uh, San USA Bioenergy Project. As you see in the map, increasing biodiversity on the landscape, like a, a, per, a, a perennial grass on the marginal land, like a highly erodible or wetland, will promote the system productivity and sustainable sustainability of agriculture, while we can maximize farm profitability. I think that's all I have. Uh, thank you so much for your listening. Thanks so much, DK. That was fascinating. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I have some issue with the microphone again. <laughs> no apologies needed. Rosa, what happened to my initial poll? Uh, I'd like to kind of bring that in. I'd like to, we, we have a couple of questions on the screen here. And um, DK, people are interested in having access to your PowerPoint. So okay. just so that everyone knows, the actual recorded webinar presentation will be accessible um, after okay. today. And Rosa can speak more about that. But if people want your, pres your presentation, should they, uh, should they email you directly? For your PowerPoint? Yes, yeah, that's, PowerPoint. yeah, I think the end of my slide is showing my email address. Perfect. They can email, yeah, and I can send you Perfect. the PDF format. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a question from Jean. Okay. Uh, now, DK, do you want me to read these aloud or do you want to go through them? We only have one question. Uh, any okay. You, oh. Can you see it there? Okay. Yeah, any crossbreeding of the lowland and onland ecotype of a hybrid vigor? I think so. Uh, there's uh, some uh, research already reported, and also actually one uh, hybrid of cultivar. I mean, hybrid of the switchgrass is now available in the market right now. The name of the hybrid switchgrass is uh, Liberty. It's coming out of the Nebraska Lincoln, Nebraska a ARS uh, breeding program. Hmm. And and we observed the Liberty switchgrass produce more biomass than and. Uh, some of up, I mean, most of upland switchgrass, and same time, those liberty has a great uh, winter and a cold tolerance. Does that make sense? Hmm. Oh, yeah, I'm. Um, I okay. think I'm not sure if Gene is happy with that, but. Uh, he seems to be. <laughs> okay. Do we have? Oh, he's he's okay. he's pleased. Thanks, Gene. Okay, Do we okay. have any more questions okay. for DK? Carol, can you see that, DK? Okay. Carol, can you see that, DK? Okay. Just want to mention that Wisconsin, we now have a statewide market for the ecosystem service of phosphorus ab abatement, range of loading in the winter. It's a situation rate for the piloting grass production. Wow, that's good. I mean, great to hear that. I know the Wisconsin, Minnesota has uh, always had a other state, and I think this is a great opportunity. And perennial grassland can have more benefit, and not just environmental service, also can sum up, you know, actual income. What is the good source to find the nat native grass seed? I think uh, this is a very important question. I think a good question. Uh, you are in Wisconsin. Oh, where are you? Okay, you're okay. No, uh, Greg. Greg. Oh, uh, you are in Ohio. I think one of our participant name is Kevin Ernst. I don't want to promote his business, but Kevin, Kevin, Kevin Ernst and um, Ernst Seed and Conservation in Pennsylvania can have all kind of good sources for the Ohio. I think. The seed company name is uh, Kevin Ernst, uh, the Ernst Seed and Conservation. I'm sure there's some other seed also available too, but that's what I know. And I know that Mr. Kevin, the Ernst provide a great quality of the seed. So if I may interject, I'd also, I'm going to bring in a diff another poll as we're in between questions here. Uh, we we want to know a little bit more about our audience members. So if you would be so kind as to fill this out. He's doing his best right now to respond in the chat box. So I do encourage anyone else's uh, questions, please. Uh, 
Um, I'm also going to get rid of these polls so that everyone can take note of DK's uh, email address right here on the last slide. And with that, oh, DK's typing. Let's give it a few more minutes. Another question from Jean. When you consider ecosystem services, have you considered multi-species mixes versus monocultures? Hmm. And I, I encourage anyone to um, to to add in other questions here in the chat box. We've got a lively conversation going on right now. I also wanted to thank DK uh, for this really, really interesting presentation. And Rosa, I believe you um, you included information there about the accessibility of this presentation later on. If you, I'm not sure if you want to speak to that. Yeah, I did. What I'll be doing is I'll be pulling the recording, and um, of course I'll edit the beginning and the end, and then I'll post it online with his PowerPoint presentation. That's so if anyone um, wants access to that. I put it in there somewhere. Uh, but it will be on the NCRCRD website in the webinar uh, section under the Innovations in Ag and Rural Development um, section. So please disseminate widely to your colleagues. And there's the URL. Perfect. Terrific. Thanks, thanks, Rosa. Is there anything else that our audience members need to go away with today? That's about it, I think. <laughs> go green. <laughs> thanks, Greg. <laughs> Thanks, Carol. Thanks for, for participating. Thanks, Greg. <laughs> Thanks, DK. Thanks, DK. I guess we can wrap up. If no one else has any questions,